Oh, recording this webinar. All right, so we're recording this. So if you have any questions, uh, if, if, if I go too fast for you or anything like that, uh, we are recording it. So make sure that you, uh, we'll be sending out a link to you guys in, with, with an email a little bit later on. So make sure you check out that email and you'll be provided with a link for the, uh, for the webinar so you can review it at your own pace. In addition to that, we're also going to be sending out a survey for you guys. So if you have any questions or any suggestions or anything that you'd like to say in the, in the survey, uh, feel free to uh, fill that out for us. And in return, we will give you a $10 or 10% rather, 10% discount coupon for the content store. So you can spend that on uh, whatever your heart desires in the content store. And we're also going to be sending out a special voucher for this particular webinar uh, that gives you a discount on the Popcorn FX Library 40 pack which I will be using in just a moment. Excuse me. <clears throat> all right, so I think that about covers all the basics here. So uh, yeah, again, welcome everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. And uh, we're gonna get started here with some action. All right, so on the screen right now, I have a project. Uh, I wanted to mention as well, but we'll also be providing you with this project uh, later on as well. So we'll be sending you, sending you out a link for this project so you can kind of review it and deconstruct it on your own time there. All right, so let's go ahead and play through the project that we're going to be uh, having at the very end. We're going to just jump right into it. No more introductions. So uh, we've got a lot of stuff to cover. So I'm just going to play back this uh, project really quick, and we're going to see what we're going to have at the end of this uh, webinar. We're going to start from scratch, but uh, this is what we're going to end up with. So a guy just kind of running through and then gets blown away by an explosion. And then through the smoke, we see uh, a guy. He should appear in just a moment here. All right, you see some fire and the smoke slowly dissipating, and there's our guy uh, recovering from his injury. All right, so pretty cool stuff. That's what we're going to be, uh, you know, producing in the next uh, 50 minutes or so. <clears throat> Excuse me. Apologies if I clear my throat multiple times throughout this uh, webinar here, but uh, yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, start a new project. And you can press Control G to turn your grid on and off if you want. Just a little. Uh, Helpful tip there, so you find, so you can uh, understand where the ground is, so you can see where the ground is there. All right. So the project that I had uh, that I had on the scene on the, on the screen before, the uh, I have it saved as a custom project, and you'll get this project a little bit later on. But if you want to find that map or that uh, that scene, basically, you just need to go to your set tab here, and under terrain, there is a mesh medium folder here. And this, this comes embedded with iClone, so you will have this in your iClone 7. You'll have this combat stage, right? So let's just double click on the old combat stage and bring that in. All right, we've had this since, I think, iClone 5 or something like that. So it's pretty old school. All right, and we have this, uh, you know, beautiful looking uh, stage. We can, if you hold Alt and Shift, by the way, and you zoom out using both mouse buttons, click and drag both mouse buttons, you can zoom in and out faster. It's a really useful tip if you have a large scene like this. So again, that's holding Alt and Shift and both mouse buttons. You can zoom out a lot faster, okay, if you have a really large scene. All right, I always use that for larger scenes myself. I'm just going to press Control G to turn off the grid for now. Okay, all right, so here we are, this nice uh, scene right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add some water in there as well since we have kind of a, an empty ravine over here. All right, uh, I'm just going to throw in some water there. To do that, we can go over to the water folder under the uh, set tab again, and we're just going to go ahead and load in a uh, gentle wave. All right, there we go, gentle wave. So now we've accidentally flooded the entire thing. Excuse me. So what we want to do here is go on the right side. We see the, uh, the water height here. We need to change that from 50 to uh, you know zero, and even at zero, it's still a little bit you know on on the on the ground. All right, so you can still see a little bit covering the the street here. So we can actually take that down to maybe like a value of negative 20. Yes, you can take the water down to negative values. All right, there you go. All right, so we're gonna have the nice reflection off the water there and everything. Okay, now uh, what we're gonna do next is add in a sky. So in the sky folder here, we'll just throw in a clear day zero zero and boom. All right, so in a couple minutes there, we have our scene all set up and this is what it looks like now. All right, so a little bit better. All right, so the next item of business is to bring in our hero onto the screen, okay? I, I kind of got inspired by this uh, for this scene quite a while ago, you watching the Mission Impossible, I'm not sure if you guys have seen it, but the one where Tom Cruise gets kind of, he's running along the bridge and gets blown away to the side and hits a car. I just decided I'd recreate that a long time ago and uh, I've been running that scenario for a while ever since. So let's go over here to the actor uh, tab under avatar. Let's click on avatar here. You may not have some of these folders such as the Battle Mech series, but I'd highly recommend checking them out. We got some you know cool looking Android characters and I can talk about those a little bit later on if you have any questions. 
but we're going to use the embedded characters for this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just throw in, we can throw in Zane. I'm going to throw in this base mail here. I'm just going to double click that because that's uh, iClone 7.02. Let's wait for that to bring onto the screen here. All right, so there it is. So the first item of business is getting this guy to run. So we want to create a run cycle for him. Now there's very, very, there's a, a number of different ways you can create a run on your character. I always like how this character has uh, jewels, uh, he's like bedazzled on his jeans. Anyways, we'll just ignore that for now. But uh, yeah, so there's a lot of different ways you can create a run cycle. You can use the embedded uh, runs here under the motion uh, folder. You can use any mo any motions you import in from Mixamo or any motions that you have on, on with other software. You can import those in from FBX files. But I'm going to use the old trust, uh, tried and true uh, uh, motion tab here, animation tab rather, and use the motion puppet. So with the motion puppet, there's a number of different uh, you know options here. There's idles and moods. I'm pretty sure. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with this. If you're not really familiar with the motion puppet, I can always you know, answer more questions in the Q&A. But I'm gonna assume you have at least a basic grasp of what it does. You just press space to preview any motion that you have. You know, there's a number of different profiles here. A male natural idle. These can be very useful and there's a lot of ways you can customize them as well, which we'll see in just a moment. But I'm gonna go ahead and use a move one and we're gonna use the basic run, all right? So this basic run, it's more like a jog. Again, just press space to preview. It's more like a jog, right? It doesn't really look like he's running away from a missile or you know, helicopter or whatever it is that's chasing him. So we need to make this run a lot more dynamic. And the way we do that is we use these uh, sliders down here. Now there's exaggeration, which is kind of the basic one. You can really exaggerate it, but I find the exaggeration kind of just makes him look a little bit stupid. Um, you know, you can slightly, if you bring this up way too much, he starts running like a chicken like this. Okay, so you don't want that. Um, I tend to bring the exaggeration up maybe a tad bit, like maybe to a value of 10 above. Okay, but what you, uh, the bread and butter really is in these uh, these presets over here. So since he's running, uh, you know, at full tilt, we'll have him lean forward a little bit. Okay, so we can use this lean forward slider right here. Uh, we'll have the slouch as well. Okay, so we kind of, you know, really slouching and running over. We also need to go here and uh, give him a longer stride. Okay, since he's kind of sprinting. You can notice that his legs will have a longer stride. And again, you can click and drag, hold Alt and right click and drag to rotate around your character as you're previewing him like this. Okay, so you can go from the other side, you can see from the front. It still looks like he's like just kind of jogging, although it looks like he is running a little bit faster, but uh, there's a couple things you can add here like bouncing kips. This is a really important one. So this kind of brings, like bounces him higher into the air with each stride. So that's an important one there. Swaying hips I find, can have a little bit of an effect. I don't like it too much. Uh, maybe a little bit of swing hips there. Uh, you can notice that more from the front, but we're not gonna worry about it. Uh, let's just loosen the neck a little bit as well, since you know he's running really fast and you know with wild abandon, so he's just kind of you know moving his neck back and forth. He, he doesn't have time to do a proper stiff neck run, I guess. <laughs> and uh, then we have swaying more. So the sway more, okay? You'll notice this one from the front a lot. So you can see he's running from side to side. Um, I can actually just take out speed a little bit since we are broadcasting live, so maybe a little bit choppy for you guys, so I'll just try and slow it down here. So swaying more and swaying less. So you can see the swaying less has a huge effect, all right? So swaying less just seems like he's just kind of like prancing along, all right? And uh, swaying more, a lot, a lot more dynamic movement. All right, so this looks a lot more like he's sprinting, okay? Generally, that's the, the look we're going for. Okay, so what we want to do here is I'm, I'm, I'm okay to record this now. Obviously, we want to bring the speed back up to 100. We can actually adjust the speed a little bit later on as well, which I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, I don't want to spend too much time on this, so let's go ahead and just uh, press the record button. So we have all the settings already saved here, and I'm going to press record, and I'm going to record about, uh, I don't know, like 10 strides or something like that. It doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and press space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Okay, I, I lost count there. All right. Uh, okay, it doesn't really matter how many strides we have, but uh, let's close down the uh, motion uh, layer or motion puppet tool rather, and let's press F3 to go into our timeline here, and let's bring up the timeline a little bit here. And in our mail to uh, track, we have the motion uh, track right here, and we have the uh, or the uh, motion clip right here. So if I hold Alt and scroll my mouse button, I can zoom in and out of my timeline. Very important tip: holding Alt and scrolling in and out the easiest and most efficient way, excuse me, to uh, um, zoom in and out of your timeline. 
Okay, so now we have this uh, puppet clip you can see right here, times 1.00, which means it's just at regular speed, one to one. Okay, if we wanna make this a little bit faster, we can do so, but what I'm gonna do first is uh, let's go ahead and uh, play back. You can see he's just running in place. So I'm gonna go to maybe about frame 250, doesn't really matter, and uh, let's press the G hotkey. If you press the G hotkey, that gives you like an overhead view of your character. You can press A, S, D, and F to get uh, side views of your character, and, and G will give you the overhead view. And also J is a useful one for zooming in on the face. So those hotkeys are really useful, your home home row basically. I use the F key all the time. Uh, you can use it for props and everything too. But we're gonna go to G. All right, so at frame 250, we want him to be you know, kind of running forward. So how far is he gonna run forward? Let's just kind of estimate right now. Press the W hotkey to bring up our movement gizmo on our character, and just bring him forward like this. About there. Okay. So now he's moving from here to there. Wow. All right. Let's press F to go on the on the side here, where we should have pressed A or S, but it doesn't really matter. And let's kind of take a look at you know the pace. Basically, what we're looking for is the pace that he's running at. We don't want any foot sliding, minimal foot sliding. So you'll notice here that uh, one problem that <laughs> not really a problem, but one thing that we've changed in iClone 7 uh, with previous versions is now the transition between two transform keys is kind of an ease in and ease out. So you'll notice at the beginning, he's kind of running in place here and he won't start kind of moving forward until the, uh, you know, these frames right here. And that's because the default transition curve between two keyframes is uh, the ease in and ease out now. So let's right click on the second keyframe, go to curve editor, or not curve editor yet, transition curve presets. All right, and you can see the default one, like I mentioned, is an ease in and ease out. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change this to a linear one. We're gonna go old school, okay? So, all right, we'll just change it to linear. That's all we need to do right now. And you'll notice that, uh, yeah, it seems like he's still kind of just, you know, um, you know, sliding his feet a little bit. He's not moving forward at the pace that we want. So all we need to do in that case is go here to this frame and just move him a little bit forward. Okay, so there's less foot, uh, less foot sliding. There's more complex and detailed ways to <laughs> remove foot sliding, but, uh, this is all we're gonna work with for this one, okay? So I think that's fine. I think this pace right here is fine. And uh, there we go, we'll just work with that. Now, another cool thing you can do is, uh, let's go ahead and just uh, right here, this is all the running we need, okay? So I'm gonna go right here to this frame, right click on my clip and just break it. And then we're gonna click on this and press delete to remove that part of the clip. So now we have up to here and then he's just staying still from here. He's not changing position. Okay, if we wanted to make our, uh, you know, run a little bit faster, like maybe it seems like he's still jogging, um, he's not running fast enough for our tastes, uh, what we can do is we can actually speed this up. So click on the clip and make sure you have speed toggled right here and click and drag it faster. And then you'll see right here that we have the, um, the part in parentheses here, the numbers in parentheses is now 1 .2 or 1.21. All right, so that means it's 20%, 21% faster than it was before. So now if we play back, You'll see he'll just uh, kind of run like that. And then we can move this keyframe up like this. Okay. And if we want, we can even make it for, make him run further down or until he's like almost under the bridge here. All right. So, you know, just play around with all of those parts right there. And I think he's kind of running pretty fast there. So that's fine. All right. So the next item of business here is we want him to, you know, kind of blow up, be blown away and hit the side of a car. All right. And the car is going to be, you know, we're gonna conveniently place this right beside him at this point here. So let's go ahead and uh, where are we at here? Let's find that car. <clears throat> I believe it's under set tab, under props, uh, da, 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 under PBR. Yeah, there's PBR and then freebie right here. And Rena Fox has uh, generously allowed us to embed all of these uh, rusty old cars into iClone 7. All right, so uh, you can check out his stuff on Sketchfab or there's uh, stuff on the content store as well. I just look for Rena Fox, you should be able to find it. Let's bring in an old rusty car A and let's place it uh, right beside our dude here. And after this, we're gonna have him kind of blown against the car, all right? So uh, keep in mind, we're at frame 207 right now, so any movement we make to this car will actually change from its original position. Um, and I'll show you what I mean in just a moment here. Let's move it to the side. So this guy's a good citizen, he's parking on the side of the road as opposed to the middle of the road, even though it's the apocalypse, or so it seems in the background. <laughs> All right, and the tires are actually flat, so it's, they're meant to be like that. If you bring it up a little bit, you can see they are meant to be flat tires. So in case you're wondering, why are the tires so small? Okay, so we'll just place it right there. And of course it adds a keyframe, 
by the way, you always want to have this uh, uh, object-related track option selected, enabled, because that means whenever you select an object in your scene, it's going to switch the, uh, the tracks to that object, which is a really convenient way. So you don't have to go up here and search in the projects and find all this, or not rather here, in the track list and find all this stuff right here. All right, just a little uh, quick tip for you there. And uh, this is the keyframe for the transform. So you can see we'll move from here to here. Obviously, we don't want the car to be sliding sideways. So we just need to click and drag that keyframe all the way to the beginning. And boom, it does stay in that position right there. And our guy comes bobbing along here. Oh, I forgot to mention as well, we, we need to actually modify the motion. This is one thing that I wanted to add that we've had a new uh, feature since uh, since the, uh, the previous version of this webinar. Uh, again, let's select our, our dude here with object-related track selected. Let's close down a rusty car here. All right, so a way you can modify your, your run, um, let's actually just, um, uh, okay, let's just delete this keyframe for now, this transform keyframe, we know where it is. Because uh, what I want to show you here is the motion modify tool where you can further modify the run, okay? Uh, so after you've done your you know, initial capture there, you can right click on your clip and just select the uh, modify option right here, okay? And that'll bring up your motion modifier panel, all right? So this is a really cool uh, tool I find. Um, what you can do is you can uh, preview right here and uh, just, the, just the same as the uh, motion puppet tool. And you can see our run, okay? So he's running just like this. And uh, let's actually just uh, expand this, I'll slow it down a little bit. Okay, we're at frame what? 208, okay, let's bring in reverse here. Okay, let's just, uh, whatever, okay. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to kind of see for you guys, hopefully. I know when it goes too fast, when we're broadcasting, it can be a little bit uh, choppy. So again, let's do the same thing. Modify and uh, preview, press space to preview. Okay, so here we can uh, dictate the upper exaggeration, lower exaggeration separately. So if we exaggerate the upper, you can see, whoa, look at his arms way up there. Pretty funny stuff, all right? I just like to keep the upper normal and we can exaggerate the lower, all right? So now he's taking even longer strides. So we're just kind of really, uh, you know, exaggerating that lower and here you can have him lean forward even more, all right? Just like this. Uh, you can have his neck forward, okay? So now you can have him like neck back or neck forward. So there's features in here that we don't have in the, uh, in the original uh, motion puppet tool. Uh, stuff like slouch, you can have him slouch even more. Okay, um, all the other stuff like raise elbows, wide stance, toes out. And if you stop your preview, you can actually go here as well. Uh, slider mode, you can choose pose correction and there's different uh, options here. So you can have his hips forward, or hi uh, hips back. Uh, this one here is move mode. So this is if, if your character is moving. Uh, there's a few more options here um, you can uh, modify. So what I, I just like to use the, you know, the, uh, uh, which one is this called? Stand mode <laughs> or move mode, whatever. Uh, but again, I like to keep the lower exaggeration a little bit more. Let's preview that again. So he has like longer strides and it's, let's have his head forward even more. Okay, so we can bring his head down, neck forward like that. So he's really pounding it and uh, have him lean forward even more. Not too much, I guess. But uh, yeah, you can have fun with all this stuff. I just wanted to show you this tool, this motion modifier tool. It's a really useful, uh, you can have his hips bouncing even more, so you can really exaggerate that a lot more. So now you can see he's really just like, you know, uh, pounding the pavement here. A lot uh, a lot more interesting and uh, dynamic than we had before. Okay, and once you're done all that just stuff, just press OK, and it'll just, uh, you know, uh, create your clip there. It'll go back to uh, one speed, by the way, just so you know, and then we'll just take it back down to, I think we had it at uh, about 200 frames there. Uh, maybe a bit more. There we go. Okay. All right. And then we had him at the position. Uh, we'll just have to change his transform position one more time. Sorry for that aside there, guys. And uh, W here. And we'll bring him to beside the uh, car where it's supposed to be. All right. There we go. Okay. We're going to place him right there. So let's make sure we test that and make sure it looks okay. Oh, and again, transform position. We need to change that to linear one more time. Okay, good. So I think we're, we're satisfied, at least I'm satisfied with this. <laughs> let's just uh, zoom in and see if any foot sliding. I think we're good. Okay, so let's go to that frame right here. And what we need to do now is we need to have him you know, being blown against the car. We're gonna add in the effects afterwards just because the effects create a lot of fire and smoke, which we don't really need in our scene. So all I wanna do right here is maybe this explosion it takes him maybe about, uh, what frame are we at here? 
214, maybe takes him to about, you know, 230 or so to uh, fly against the side of the car here. So all we need to do right now is just uh, change his position, transform position. You'll see to create another keyframe in the transform track. Use the E hot key to rotate him and rotate him backwards like this. And W again to move. W and E are your hot keys for movement and transform, or rather rotation and transform, by the way. Really useful to know. And we'll just kind of place him right there. All right, so let's test that out. So, boom, okay. So it looks okay, but you can see it's a, it's a very linear uh, movement and we'll, we'll explore how to get that, how to change that a little bit later. So we'll just keep the linear for now, okay. Boom, just like that. And what we need to do here is, at, first at this frame, when he's starting, we're now gonna use the motion layer editor here and we're just gonna go ahead and select uh, um, reset, okay. What reset is gonna do <laughs> is uh, we don't need the material track open here. Let's open up the uh, uh, motion layer track. We need to go in here. And there you go, motion layer, okay. And so you'll see a keyframe up here when I press that uh, reset. Reset just adds a keyframe and uh, consistent with the motion that's in the motion layer track or in the, in the motion clip there. I'll talk about that a little bit later as well. And uh, here, by the way, if you're clicking on keyframes, you can press tab and shift tab to toggle between two keyframes. A really useful little tip there as well, I use all the time, tab and shift tab, okay? Just so you don't have to be you know, um, finding the exact frame with your mouse. All right, so what we'll do here is we'll just kind of put him into a position where he's kind of being blown against the car. So we need to unlock his feet by clicking these two lock buttons here. Let's bring this foot up like this. Uh, and maybe bring it to the side a little bit. Uh, Okay, and this one obviously needs to be brought up a little bit as well. And you can use the, emote, the human IK here you can see at work, all right. Just spread his legs out a little bit. Boom, so now it looks like he's been you know, blown against the car. And we're gonna tilt his, uh, select the hip bone first and pin the rotate. So we don't, have, we don't want the rip, uh, the rip, the hip, <laughs> to rotate or to move. So we have the T and the R, which stands for transform and rotation locks. Okay, that's indicated right here. We'll take this uh, part here and uh, his chest and just kind of you know, bring him forward like this, like he actually is being blown back into the car. And uh, I wish we had shatterable windows on this, on this car here. And let's just take his uh, arms and kind of uh, bring that out like this. And what you can do with the hands is pretty cool. Um, we'll change bone edit mode off here so you can actually see the hands. You can click and drag on the palm here and you can move your hands in and out like that, which is pretty cool, all right? All right, so uh, looks like he's punching someone right now, but we need to bring this uh, arm forward as well and this elbow forward. Uh, okay, so that looks more like he's being, you know, blown back into the car. Let's bring, open that left hand there as well. Okay, so uh, I think we're good there. So what we need to do is um, we're also uh, we're going to uh, create a transition curve between this keyframe and this keyframe. Now you're not going to be able to notice it very much, but it's going to look a lot better than just a linear movement. Okay. And we'll talk about the motion curve editor or the curve editor rather in just a moment here. Uh, I'm not going to do too much in it. I just kind of want to show you how the, the features of it. Um, so we'll go from here to here. All you want to do is right click on the second transform keyframe and select transition curve presets. You can see the curve editor is down here. We're going to talk about that in a moment. But transition curve presets first. And we're going to use the decelerate because the explosion at first will like blow him really far, like really fast. And then it'll kind of ease out, as you can see at the top there. You can see the movement of the green dot there is the uh, kind of rhythm that you can expect. OK, and we're just going to kind of strengthen that up a little bit as well. And you can you can test it by clicking it. OK, so I think that's pretty good. Boom, just like that. We can even maybe just, you know, stretch it a little bit more and take this uh, keyframe. And uh, actually right here, what we need to do is just double click in the motion layer track and click and drag that keyframe right there. If you want to stretch it out a little bit more, ooh, there we go. I think that looks good. Okay, so, ooh. and then from here, we're gonna have him kind of bounce against the car and fall back down. So uh, then maybe from here to here, we're just gonna do this really simply. We don't have time to get into much more detail here, but uh, so we're just gonna have three separate transform keyframes. And uh, here, we're just gonna move him back down, down to the down to earth, rotate him like this. Woo, <laughs> there we go. Head first, straight into the pavement. 
Uh, okay. Uh, obvious right, right here, we need to do a couple things. And the first thing I want to do is select our character and make sure we have foot contact and hand contact on because once we do that, we'll have our character. You can see his feet will contact the pavement like this. Let's zoom in so you can see a little bit better. His foot will contact the pavement like this and his hands will contact and the human IK will take care of the rest. So we have this. His head will go through since we don't have head contact. But uh, there you go. Okay. So we'll have him, you know, bounce almost all the way back to the to the line here and let's just uh, adjust his edit motion layer position here let's take his head and move it up a little bit there we go and uh we can uh take his hips and move his, his hips a little bit forward there as well okay and okay so i think that looks good again i'm not going to spend too much detail because you can spend forever ages on this motion layer editor here uh, apologies if my animation is a little bit sketchy but uh, there we go. And we'll just kind of, you know, leave it at this position, I think. That's fine. Maybe his tilt his head up a little bit. Okay, like this. And you can probably take his neck up a little bit as well. There we go. Let's take that hand back down. There we go. Okay, so that's the second position that we're going to have. And you can see his feet are kind of weird, but you can, uh, you know, take his feet and rotate those backwards like this. Okay, but then you'll have to bring them up that there you go okay all right same on this side i'm not going to worry too much about this stuff i know the motion layer editing stuff is the most some of the, most, the boringest stuff all right so I'll just leave it like that so it doesn't look like his ankles are dislocated all right so here's his here's his ending position okay so he kind of bounces off the car uh right here and just like that, boom, and then coming down like this. So you can see the problem here is it's like, and then he kind of just, you know, almost like softly bounces back. So what we want to do here is I'm actually going to click on this keyframe. We're going to um, control C and control V, maybe two frames down. We want to stay in that position for a little bit. And at the second position, we're going to just, you know, bring his uh, chest or a neck or whatever it is back like this and have him like snap backwards. Like he just kind of hit the, the car. Okay. And maybe you just uh, bring his uh, knees a little bit back as well. There we go. Okay. So it's almost, that's the impact uh, um, pose right there. Okay. So ooh, like that. And then going back to the back to like this way. All right. All right. So from here to here, we have that blue and then, and then here his uh, pose will be a little bit, you know, forward. And we'll uh, kind of just take his chest there and move it like this. Okay, so then we have this position to like that and then oof, like that. Now what we want to do here is between this, these two transform keyframes right here, I want to right click on this one and use a different transition curve preset. This one we're going to use the, the sudden start with the elastic end. Okay, you can, use it, you can also use this end in a bounce, all right? So let's take a look at what this does. So you can see it just kind of uh, boom like that, and then he kind of bounces on the ground like that. Now, the bounce doesn't look that realistic, you know, uh, for obviously for a dude just like, you know, landing on the ground. You can also use this sudden start with elastic end, but I like this end in a bounce one, okay? So if we play back the entire uh, process here from him launching off the ground, okay, so you can see it's a little bit too, uh, you know, cozy right there. So we need to kind of just tone down this, uh, this decelerate. Let's just kind of bring it down, you know, to maybe 49 or something like that. So, oof. and, uh, maybe we just need to actually do something a bit more damping might work on this one. Okay. Let's try damping. There you go. And, uh, this one, we'll just get rid of that keyframe there. Okay. And this one needs to be a bit more. So what we need to do here now is this is the advantage of having the curve editor because uh, without the without the curve editor plugin, you're limited to these transition curve presets. But if you have the curve editor, you can you know really customize these a lot. So let's take a look at this one right here. So we have him you know kind of blowing up against the. Uh, let's not use the damping one actually. Let's use that to the original one we had. Decelerate. It seemed to work fine when I did it before. But uh, okay. Let's go ahead and uh, right click. Use the curve editor. All right, whoops, curve editor, there we go. Let's get rid of the motion layer editor right here. Now, if you're, you know, you want to get into the whole uh, 
mode, you can go into Windows here and go to Workspace and go to Animation. And this will get rid of your uh, uh, content manager there. Uh, you can get rid of the mini viewport. Stupid uh, go to webinar stuff is in the way there. You can't see it, but I can see it's in the way. Oh, let's just take our curve editor out like this. All right. So curve editor, um, there's tutorials on this. I'm going to briefly explain it since we're kind of running out of time here. I want to spend some time on the effects and camera work as well, although the animation takes up the bulk of this uh, stuff here. So there's position Y um, and position X. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at our character here and let's scroll out. So you can scroll your mouse wheel in and out to zoom out in and out of your uh, curve editor here. And so the red X axis here, that's what we're looking at. His position on the red X axis. Okay. Which is position is transform right here. Okay. On his own personal red X axis. So basically horizontal from our perspective, excuse me right now. Okay. And you can see the bounce right here. You can see the bounce. If we hold control, and click in our control and control and scroll our mouse wheel in. You can see this is the uh, the balance right here. And we can you know scrub through the timeline like this, and boom, and then that position right here. So here is our from here to here is our is our uh, decelerate, and from here to here is our uh, transition curve preset, the end in a bounce. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to make this a bit sharper. This uh, keyframe right here, we want it to be a bit sharper since it's kind of like he's like. Oh, I hit the car. Time to decelerate now and then like that. So we want to make it uh, a little bit more uh, angular. So what we can do is we can just uh, not break it rather. We need to go ahead and uh, use the acceleration or deceleration or uh, step or anything like that. One of these uh, options right here. And what you want to do is click on your uh, keyframe here and select curve. And you can go ahead and select uh, sample shown preset curves. Uh, you can remove keys. You can add a key if you want. So add a keyframe like this, just like that. And then what you want to do is, you know, move that around. So you can see it'll change the position and also the angle as well. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and choose the spline uh, position right here. Okay. And uh, we'll just go ahead and uh, change this to a tangent. Uh, it should be working there. I'm not sure why it's not. Maybe I guess we need to sample this whole thing. Okay, so if you do a sample the uh, shown preset curve like this, it'll just kind of create a bunch of keyframes like this. Uh, generally, you, you don't really have to do this, but what I'm going to do is just use it for now. And we're going to take all these uh, keyframes right here and go ahead and just uh, kind of, you know, um, select them like this. I'm going to delete a couple of these keyframes, like these ones. I just select them and delete them. Okay, and then what's gonna happen is we have this poof like that. Okay, so now it's a, a bit more of a jagged. We can take all these uh, specific uh, ones right here and we can use our little uh, tool here to uh, make it a lot more uh, dynamic looking, just like this. And then if we want, we can add a keyframe over here as well. So just uh, right click, select add key, add keyframe, and just click right there and it'll add another keyframe. And there's our little spline curve right there. So we need to make this as sharp as we can. All right, so it'll be something like this. If we just play back. Okay, so we have like, oof, like that. And uh, we'll just uh, bring this up a little bit. Okay, so now it's creating like a much more dynamic, so like, poof, like that, okay? And we probably want to take these actually and move those a little bit further in like this as well. And here you can actually just, uh, you know, Take out the keyframes that you don't want. All right, so maybe like these ones I don't want. I'm just go ahead and delete those. And uh, there we go. All right, I think this one will be fine. <laughs> it's a little bit sketchy. I'm not the best at the curve editor, as you can probably see, but uh, I'll just take these ones in a little bit as well. Change the position, rather. All right, we'll just keep it simple. Try and use as few keyframes as possible. There we go. Okay. Delete these bad boys here. And we'll just take this one up. That's what we'll do. There you go. Okay. So you have too many, too many sampled keyframes. It kind of creates a bit, bit of a hassle. So I like to kind of just, uh, you know, make it a bit more interesting by uh, moving these up. Okay. We'll just work with that. 
I don't want to spend too much time on this stuff, okay? So uh, there we go. Okay, so explosion, boom, against the wall, and then the bounce right here. And with that bounce, again, we can, you know, change the, the amount of bounce. You can also change the, the Z position as well. So you can see he's bouncing up a little bit like that. There's his position, maximum height, and then boom, the Z blue axis right here. All right, and you can, you know, reduce the, uh, the bounce there if you want. Right click, add key, add keyframe. Just place one right there. And then something like that. So he's not bouncing as high. Okay, and then uh, maybe from here, you can uh, even extend it out, make his bounce a little bit longer. All right, so just click these keyframes and drag them out. So his, his bounce will be a little bit, uh, you know, less sudden. Okay, just like that. All right, so we're just gonna work with that. Okay, that's the, that's the uh, I spent too much time on the curve editor, but uh, you know, that's how you work with the curve editor. You can just, you know, select these keys and, and I just showed you how to sample. And, uh, oops. Okay, shouldn't have that, sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so there we have that uh, that bounce. All right, and then if you wanna change the uh, transform position, let's go back to our uh, window workspace and standard. And I'm gonna just close the curve editor now. And if you wanna, you know, uh, press F3 to go into our timeline again. If you wanna change the position uh, during those bounces, you can see it creates all those keyframes right there. Um, you know, you can just delete whichever ones you want and place them wherever you want in the scene. Okay, but I'm not gonna worry too much about uh, this right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, move on to our popcorn effects stuff. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna just go ahead and now I wanna uh, pre-mention here as well that you don't have to use the popcorn effects that I'm using. There's actually other stuff that you can use. Um, there's content packs that you can uh, get from the content store, but I'd recommend checking out the popcorn effects stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll show you if you want uh, later, I'll show you the particle you can use in place of these popcorn effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, add those into our scene first. So uh, again, in the set tab here, we'll just minimize the props. We'll go to particles now. The stuff that comes embedded with iClone is in the legacy folder right here. You can use the uh, smoke right here. Uh, you can see there's smoke and there's fire and smoke, this stuff right here. You can use these in place of the popcorn effects that I'm gonna use, but uh, the popcorn effects look a lot better. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and use those. All right, and uh, I'll, find, I'll show you where you can find those later on as well. So. The library for uh, library 40 rather is the first one we're going to take a look at and we're going to take a look at weapons and explosion so this library 40 this is the one I'm, we're going to be sending out a special coupon for you guys and uh i'd highly recommend checking it out there's tons of really cool stuff in here uh, but we have this blast okay so what we need to do is we need to place this blast on the screen right beside our character maybe about right here and we're going to place it you know somewhere in the middle of this lane so I'm gonna just go ahead and click and drag this blast in there. And let's just, uh, so you can see that it's indicated by the dummy there. And what I'm gonna do is we only, we only want it to start blasting or emitting at this point right here, this frame right here. So this is frame 210, okay? So that's the blast right there, okay? You can see it blows him away. He's blown away by this blast. Now, if you, if you just play your project like this, it's gonna keep on exploding. You're just gonna see multiple explosions, okay? And uh, what we're gonna do is we wanna turn off emit. So over here in your popcorn effects tab, there'll be an emit at the very top. Just select off and uh, it'll you know, turn the emission off. Now there's, uh, you can actually simulate your, your explosion to kind of see what it looks like. Um, I'm not gonna, the first thing we need to do here is if you wanna do that, go down to your uh, 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 particle here or rather your particle settings or attributes here and change your lifetime to uh, you know something smaller. Uh, right now the lifetime is only at one. And uh, there's all kinds of values you can modify here. I'm not gonna go into too much detail on, on this. Um, if you can press Shift S to simulate, and you can see, boom, we have this explosion. And if you want to have you know a longer lifetime or the lack uh, for your explosion, you can increase that to like maybe a value of four. And you can see the explosion will last longer. Or you take it down to like 0 0.9, you can barely even notice it. <laughs> the smoke from the previous one is still there actually. All right, so this is the problem. The smoke is kind of pretty heavy on this one. So this is the 0 0.10 lifetime. So the, you can see the explosion is very, 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 very small, very short. So what we want to do is let's change our lifetime to maybe value of, uh, you know, one point something. Let's keep it pretty normal here. And there you go. We'll create that nice smoke and the burning debris, the blast light brightness. You can see it brightens up quite a bit. Okay, 
using global illumination, it brights, brightens up the entire scene here. All right, there you go. And we can take that down to whatever we want. And the burning debris amount, we can create more burning debris. Okay, so you can see right there, there's a lot more burning debris. And take that down, it's a little bit less. And ground dust amount. Uh, the ground dust opacity, this is an important one here. So if we take that down to like 0 0.2, you can see it'll be a lot easier to see through the smoke, okay? Smoke will dissipate a lot faster. And uh, impulse is kind of how much it's exploded outwards. Okay, you can't really notice a difference much right now, but uh, yeah, just take that up to, up to like a higher value to have the smoke spread out in a longer distance. Again, I'm not gonna worry too much about these parameters. You can experiment on your own time. They're kind of easy to, to figure out. But let's just press Control S, or rather Shift S to end the simulation there. And what we're gonna do is at that frame, right now we're gonna have emission off, and we're gonna go to that frame. I think it was frame 210 or something that we had at. Yeah, where he starts to lift off the ground. We have lift off right about here. All right, you can press go by frame by frame here as well. All right, so this frame is where the explosion happens. Let's just go ahead and emit on, and then boom, like that. All right, so we have the explosion. And then obviously after it emits, after it creates that explosion, then you want to turn the emission off. So boom, right here, and then turn the emit off, okay? And that remaining smoke will be there. And then of course, at this frame here, what we want to do is right after the explosion, we're going to maybe at frame 250 or so, we're going to add in the fire and the smoke. All right, so the fire can be found. The fire I recommend using, uh, not this torch fire here. There's one in nature, I think. That's a better fire for, is it in nature or is it in magic? Can't be in magic. Oh, I think this one might be in the learning samples actually. So the learning samples under applications, there is a texture emitter folder and uh, there's a fire in here. You can also use this burning ash, which is pretty cool. I think the, the learning samples come with a plugin, all right? So uh, keep that in mind, and there's a fire here somewhere. There we go, flame. Flame on, let's just bring it over here to the relatively the same position that our explosion occurs. And what we're gonna do is just go ahead and uh, simulate that. Shift S again, let's just uh, disable our uh, blast for now. You can disable it by pressing this button right here, activate, deactivate. All right, let's select our flame. Shift S to simulate. All right, <clears throat> there we have it. There's our flame. Obviously it needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's go over here to our uh, uh, emitter settings here. Change our volume on the X and Y axes, which are the first two. I change it to about 200 maybe. All right, suddenly we have the fire spreading to a 200 cubic uh, unit area here. All right, now the fire looks a little bit lame right now. So you need to kind of uh, change, maybe change the emit rate or change the quota to a higher value. The quota is how much fire is on the screen or how many particles are on the screen at once. And the emit rate is, well, the rate, the rate that they emit at, all right? So we're gonna change that maybe to 500. And uh, if we change it to like, you know, uh, 1000, for example, we'll have a very uh, thick fire just like this. I don't want it to be that thick. I'm gonna keep it at about 500. And we're kind of running short on time here. So I'm just gonna run through this. Um, you can change the uh, spread ratio as well. Um, you can have it, uh, you know, spread in all directions like this. All right, uh, it's not really having much of an effect in this particular one, but uh, just keep that in mind. And down here, uh, let's deconstruct this fire really quickly here. So we're using blend mode additive. If you change it to alpha blend, you can see it doesn't really look good. Unlit doesn't really look good. Additive will correspond to it's important to notice these two parameters right here. Blend mode is additive, and we're using the 8x4 Sprite Atlas or a Sprite Sheet. That means you're looking at additive 32. If you have this 8x4 selected, then it'll always have an end width of 32. Uh, if you start, if you have this deselected, it'll always be this uh, resource item in the resource list. Okay, so 32 is always using this Sprite Atlas, and you can put whatever you want. If we use the alpha blend 32, it's gonna be emitting numbers, which is what you saw earlier, okay? So there's the alpha blend. Believe it or not, it's actually emitting numbers from one to nine or one to zero, okay? So additive, again, it's this parameter right here. And uh, we have other popcorn effects tutorials that go into more detail on that. Again, any questions I can answer in the Q&A session. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it right now though. 
Uh, I'm going to add some exposure bloom just to kind of thicken it a little bit. And you can increase or decrease the strength here. And you can see the effect that that has. So you can really thicken the flames like that with the exposure bloom. Let's thicken it a little bit there. And then there's, you know, basic attributes here as well. Um, you can have the, if you want the fire to last longer, you can uh, change the, uh, the maximum life, something a little bit longer, like 22 seconds. And it'll kind of just start floating up into the sky like this a lot higher. Okay. So almost, almost like a heavenly fire or something. Uh, we'll just change it back down to maybe a value of five. Okay. And the brightness, distortion, intensity, all these parameters, there's all kinds of stuff that we have tutorials coming out for in uh, the next uh, couple of weeks here, uh, done by yours truly. Uh, for wind, there's a cool wind thing. You can actually go to the forest and you can change the wind. So you can have it blow, you know, right now it's blowing uh, on the negative Y axis, which is kind of coming towards us here. If we uh, rotate around, you can see it, you know, moving slightly at maybe a 45 degree angle or something. Maybe we can have it even more to that direction. All right. Um, we're just going to kind of keep it, you know, relatively where it was. And uh, okay, lots of stuff you can modify in here, but uh, like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but uh, there we go. All right, now we're going to add the smoke in there as well. So let's uh, shift S to that simulation and let's throw in the smoke. Now the smoke, I believe, is it in the learning samples as well? Heavy smoke. Okay, we can use this in the, in the text emitter learning samples applications right here and just throw that in there. And uh, if we simulate that, shift S. There you go, there's our heavy smoke. And we'll just use, use the same thing with that. We'll change the volume. Uh, we need a larger emission, maybe to 100 on the X and 100 on the Y. <clears throat> if you want it to be uh, you know, thicker, just change your emit rate. There we go, much thicker right there. Let's just kind of keep that low where it was. And there's always the option, if you get too, too messed up in these uh, parameters, you can always just click default and go back to the normal setting here, okay? So just keep that in mind. And uh, there's also the wind here with this one uh, under force. So you can see the wind here is uh, on the plus X axis. So it's you know going towards the red arrow, same direction as the red arrow. We can, the smoke is much more influenced by the wind, right? So you can change it. Now it's kind of going a little bit further up. We can have it going on the negative X axis there. All right, so we can have the smoke blow whichever direction we want. Let's have it slightly forward on the X axis. And again, wind force, uh, wind turbulence, pretty self-explanatory. All right, so that's, uh, we've created our, you know, fire and our smoke. And obviously we want these to start emitting at about frame 250. So let's go to frame zero, or frame one rather, and change them both off to emit off. So uh, this is the heavy smoke, off, flame, off. And then we'll just enter in a value of 250 here, and then emit on, and Emit on for the heavy smoke. Make sure that our blast is enabled. All right. So we have our dude running along like this, and then boof, like that. Okay, and the fire starts and the smoke. Cool. All right, good stuff. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to add a little bit of camera work in, and that's going to be the last thing I'm going to cover pretty much in, in uh, this tutorial here, or in this webinar, rather. Again, anything else you want me to cover, feel free to. Uh, uh, ask me in the Q&A session. I'm going to make the blast smoke a little bit thicker too as well. I like that uh, thicker smoke there. All right, anyways. Okay, and you can always make these invisible by just uh, using those little eye, eye buttons there on the uh, scene manager. All right, so let's add in a camera. This is the last thing I'm going to cover, like I mentioned. Select our character, press the F hot key, and I'm going to go ahead and create, create camera. And uh, let's change our camera view to the side. All right, so we're going to kind of follow him just running, you know, pounding the pavement like this. Uh, maybe leave a little bit of space in front of him. Okay, have him on the, like the rear third of the, uh, of the camera um, view right now. Okay, now we want the camera to follow him. There's a couple of ways you can do this, and a lot of different ways actually, but I'm going to show you the easiest way that I always use for characters. And that's to go ahead and make sure your camera item is selected. Go here to your uh, attributes and go down to uh, link and pick a parent and pick your character. Now this can be tricky. So if we press space, whoa, the camera's going all wacky because it's actually following his upper arm bone, all right? And you don't want that. If you want it to kind of just follow along with the character, make sure you click on this ellipses uh, item over here 
icon on the right and select your character's bone root. Make sure you align to none, press OK, and boom. Now we have the camera following along with our character, pounding them blah, like that. Now, uh, it goes pretty wild when our character moves, so boom, like that. And we kind of want to have a different angle. So the first thing I want to do, though, is I want to actually create a kind of a depth of field, which kind of adds a little bit of an effect to the, to the scene. So the depth of field is right here. You can activate that, pick your target, and pick the dude's head, all right? So now we have the background kind of blurred out, and you, you know you can adjust all sorts of values here. Uh, we're not going to talk too much about depth of field since we don't have time. But uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask me. And I think the explosion happens at about frame, I think it was 210 or so. All right, so maybe about here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera slightly. We're going to select our character and move it slightly ahead of him like this. All right, so then we have the camera kind of slowly rotating to the front, okay, like this. All right, so we're kind of just panning around, and <laughs> and now it's kind of a weird position when, you, when the explosion hits him. And we're in the ground at this point. So obviously we don't want to do this. At one point we want to uh, stop the link between the camera and the character. So let's press F3 and go into our timeline. Let's select our camera and close the character stuff down. See, object-related track, always have it on. And uh, camera transform position here. And uh, constraint as well. Uh, depth of field, we can open that up as well. So here's our transform position right here. And this is where we also want the link to break. Okay, so we have a constraint. The link you can see right here, there's a big line. And at this point here, we want the link to end because we want to. We don't want it to follow him along when it's kind of just you know, blowing against the car. So what we want to do here is Go ahead and unlink, and you can see that'll end the line right there, and and move right here. So here we can create our own like camera movement. And what I'm going to do is at this point here, let's just go ahead and move the cap, move our camera to this position right here, and right here. So we're going to end maybe about right here, I think. Now, what I want to also do with this camera is we can actually add a transition curve to our camera, too. So we'll have this explosion and poof, like that. And uh, nope, we need to have him a little bit more forward. So let's do something like this, because I want to see him through the fire and the smoke. That's the kind of the end game here. All right, so let me have a position like this. That should be fine. And through. OK, um, maybe even a little bit more. Actually, what I'm going to do is at here, as he hits the, we're going to have him kind of uh, follow along. So we have three camera positions, okay? So poof, like that. And from here to here, what I want to do is I'm going to actually right click and select transition curve. And now, because we have an explosion, what we can do is we can have this sudden start with elastic in. So poof, like that. And what's happening there is our camera is going to like, you know, like jitter at the very beginning where the explosion occurs, and then it's going to slowly, slowly balance out as it approaches this keyframe right here. So it's a little cool effect you can use with explosions, like poof, like that, and there we go. Okay, so that's all the camera work we're gonna be <laughs> taking care of right now. And at the end, you can see we have our character, and then we'll slowly kind of at this point, and you know, maybe just pan around through the fire and the smoke and see our character get a close up of our character's face. So maybe at about this frame here, we'll have a nice uh, you know, pan over to here because I want to see him through the distortion. All right, right here. And it looks like our fire is not, is vertically aligned. We need to fix that. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Okay, let's take a look at what this looks like. Running along like this, slowly panning to the front, poof, like that. And then there you go through the fire. And then we kind of see him from this that side over here. And notice that the cool thing with popcorn effects is they have distortion on your characters. They create distortion for anything in the background. They have, they have distortion maps, which is pretty cool. All right, so I'll find an example where it kind of hits his head right here. Uh, take a cl close look at his head right there. You can see some distortion right there on his head. If you change the camera, angle, you can probably get a little bit better. But maybe there you can see the distortion of his head with the fire. So you know the heat is creating that distortion on his head. All right, which is pretty cool. All right, there's a little little cool added feature with uh, the popcorn effects uh, plug in there. 
All right, and I think that's about all I'm gonna cover in this webinar. I'm trying to think here. Uh, again, we just covered the basics of the Curve Editor and the uh, Popcorn FX Library 40. Uh, again, we're gonna be sending you out a, a, a coupon for that uh, Popcorn FX Library 40. I highly recommend getting it. It's well worth it, well worth it if you're you know, gonna be using iClone for anything, uh, you know, um, anything really. There's tons of Popcorn FX that are really useful in any sort of scenario. I've already used a ton of them in my personal projects, so uh, highly recommend it. And the Curve Editor for you know higher, uh, more animation control. Again, I'm not super familiar with the Curve Editor yet. We just launched it uh, a month ago or two months ago, I think. So I've been you know using it uh, for a variety of things, but uh, not not as nothing really as complicated as having a character blast against the car. I've done that a couple times, but. Uh, yeah, stuff like bouncing balls and stuff is really easy. And uh, my good friend Chris, uh, AKA Stuck on 3D, uh, has created a, a couple of really good uh, tutorials um, that you can check out on our YouTube channel for the uh, Curve Editor. Um, highly recommend checking them out. Uh, really good for beginners. Um, yeah, I, so I think uh, that's all we're gonna cover right here. Um, struggling to think of anything else we can cover at this point. But uh, yeah, so let's hand it over to the Q&A session now. And again, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the questions section of your GoToWebinar panel there, and I will get to those ASAP. All right, so uh, here we go, guys. Uh, wow, we have almost a full house today. Okay, questions. Da, 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 da. All right, so Jeff asked, are these webinars recorded and available later for reference? Yes, they are. Um, so if you're, you know, if it's your bedtime or you have to leave or something, you know, uh, feel free to just, we'll send you a link later. You can uh, check those out. Okay, so Jeffrey asks, wouldn't it help the performance if you temporarily removed all that scenery? Uh, yeah, I guess. Um, I mean, this computer I'm using right now has a pretty decent video card. It's an NVIDIA uh, 1070 GTX. So this video card is actually what I would recommend. It's the it's a higher end video card, obviously, but uh, you really need it if you're going to be you know using any of the features that iClone 7 is going to have in the future, even popcorn effects. You know, I really recommend having an uh, at least an NVIDIA 1060. I know some people that run it on a 1060, um, but 1070 or even uh, Chris stuck on 3D has like twin Titans or something like that. Like, that guy's loaded. <laughs> it's like a bunch of uh, uh, yeah, really high end uh, video cards uh, on his on his uh, system there. OK, so. OK, yeah, so Jeffrey just kind of uh, elaborates on his uh, earlier question. If we know what it looks like, uh, it can be added in later. Uh, yeah, so definitely, I, I mean, uh, I'll show you for, for, for those of you who uh, may have, um, uh, you know, computers that don't have the, the, the best video cards, um, a really good way that you can save on video memory if you experience any choppy or, or laggy behavior. Uh, the easiest way to fix it, honestly, is just go up to here. Uh, first of all, make sure you have your global illumination turned off uh, using these two icons up here, so you can just shut these off. It doesn't make much of an, a change in this scene because I don't have any really uh, complicated lighting. The lighting is really simple. Um, but you can also go here to auxiliary light, and when you select that, it's not going to even bother calculating any of the light in your scene. All right, so you can see the quality uh, is lacking a little bit, obviously, not too much, you know. Um, but yeah, auxiliary light will just you know save a ton of resources. You can see how much video memory is being used. So currently it's like 1.4 out of eight gigabytes. I think if you put the auxiliary light on, it goes up to 1.5. So it saves a little bit. Global illumination on, goes up to 1.7. Uh, and, uh, you know, ideally you can probably, uh, you know, remove the, the background scene as well. Just pay attention to my video memory here down to 1.4. Um, let's see, let's just, uh, uh, all the terrain stuff here, you can you know make that all invisible if you want. Um, I don't know if that'll affect it. It seems like you can't uh, change the terrain to uh, a prop right now. Oh yeah, you can convert all your terrain to props. By the way, if you select all, the entire terrain and right-click it, you can convert it all to props. If you want to you know modify the elements separately, all right. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not sure how long. It shouldn't take that long, but uh, you can do the same thing and uh, convert it back to train as well. I hope this doesn't like freeze my computer since it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Probably should, okay, there it goes. Uh, just a couple seconds there. All right, so now they're all props and you can move them around and uh, make them all invisible. 
but uh, you can, you know, right click again and go to uh, <clears throat> convert to terrain and convert it back to terrain. All right, we'll just leave it as props right now. All right, and uh, make the floor invisible. There you go. Okay, that's for saving video memory. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next question here. Spending too much time on this. All right, so a uh, question from Ian. Um, I was just wondering if there are other particles from for purchase from Popcorn other than the packs that are available now. Yes, definitely. You can go to Popcorn Effects, uh, their website. Uh, they have tons of uh, Popcorn Effects available, and you can import those into iClone. Uh, the ones that we have available on our site are, uh, let's go to our uh, googly Google here. Uh, content store. And uh, I don't know. Sometimes our search doesn't work too well, but uh, um, okay. So you, you go to 3D assets here and we should have it appear somewhere in one of these promos. The warrior play set, sci-fi robots. There you go, Popcorn FX Library 40. You can find this in the content store. You know, well worth it, well worth the money, I think, to be honest. There's tons of cool stuff that you can create. Um, check out the tutorials that I've done on, on Popcorn FX and it'll kind of show you like the power of this, of this tool. It's really amazing. Uh, this nature stuff, like rain, like, you know, this this one is, is, is there's, there's bugs crawling, crawling on this on the skin, or bugs crawling on a mesh. You can do cockroaches or ants. It looks really creepy, uh, but really cool actually. I, I plan to use it in the near future on a project. Uh, this one right here that I have my mouse cursor over, uh, really cool. Yeah, check them out over here. Uh, you can you can this is where you purchase them from the content store, and then there's a popcorn effects uh, website as well. They have other ones you can import in. All right. Da, 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 da. Hopefully that answers your question there, Ian. Um, Gary, okay, yeah, so Gary says uh, a lot of info, way too much info to cover this quickly. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of shoehorned the uh, the uh, popcorn effects and the uh, curve editor in there. The original webinar didn't really have those, but I kind of wanted to give you an updated version uh, of this webinar where you can see those. Uh, so Gary, if you have any questions, you can always email me as well. Uh, my email is kai at reillusion.com, that's K-A-I at reillusion.com, easy to spell name. And uh, yeah, I'll be able to answer any of you, any questions you might have uh, on the specifics. Or again, we are recording this and you can review it on your own time as well. I find it's better to go a little bit faster so you can, you know, people can just pause and review rather than going super slow when people are just yawning and, you know, they want to fast forward. I don't think YouTube has a fast forward. Maybe they have a, I think they have a play faster feature, but then your, your voice sounds all chipmunky. Anyways, okay, enough of that. But yeah, Gary, if, uh, apologies for that if I go too fast for some of you guys. Uh, um, again, I'm always here to answer any follow-up questions you might have as well. All right, so Jeffrey has a suggestion. The camera might be more effective if the figure were in the left third showing some space in front rather than centered in the screen. Yeah, so uh, Jeffrey is mentioning what's called a rule of thirds. Um, I'd recommend you know checking it out. I can just, just type in Google rule of thirds. There you go. And uh, this is a, a good one. You can just Google it on your own time. Basically what he's talking about is uh, at the beginning here, so <clears throat> if I shift the camera a little bit over, he's kind of in the third. So right here, the camera position looks a little bit better than if he was right here. If he's running and the camera position is like right in the middle and we're following him in the middle, it doesn't really look as good, okay? It's, we don't really get the effect of him like going anywhere. Whereas if we you know place him in, in the left third of the camera right here, then it seems like more like he's kind of, we see the stuff in front of him and we slowly pan to the front. So we're, we're, we feel like we're kind of making progress, you know? So we feel like we're kind of, you know, running along with him. So at this point here, he's pretty much in the middle of the screen, which is what I intended. He starts off at the very left of the screen. So it's kind of like an unconscious thing where you, you just kind of feel he's making progress through the, uh, the scenes. It's like a cinematography trick. And, you know, as, as the important explosion happens, we're just boom right there. And uh, there you go. And then the rest of the stuff is just, you know, you create your creative um, freedom, whatever you want to do. All right. So uh, that's the rule of thirds. You can just Google it on your own time. I don't have too much time to go into the detail on that. But uh, da, 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 da. Uh, okay. So another suggestion. Okay. So one thing I wanted to mention as well is this explosion actually has sound. Unfortunately, the PC I'm currently using doesn't really have speakers. So, uh, but the project that you get, will have sound, okay? Uh, now, the uh, the project that you get, if you don't have the Popcorn Effects uh, Library 40 pack, you're gonna see a watermark, okay? Uh, you need to purchase that, that pack if you don't wanna have the watermark. Um, but you can still hear the sound. 
uh, when you when you play that back. All right. Um, so you we can all you can also attach your own sounds as well. Like for example, when he's you know being flown uh, flying back against the, the car. Um, uh, yeah, you can attach a sound to that. One thing I forgot to mention as well, Darn, I forgot to do the car thing. I want to show you a really quick. Uh, again, we we talked about the transform of the of the car of the character position, but a really quick and easy tip that we can use is you know when he hits the car. So right here, uh, what was it? Frame. Uh, da, 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 da. So right, he actually goes through the car. Okay, so right here as he hits the car, what I'm going to do is actually just change the car's transform position. Um, so we're going to just uh, press F3, go into our timeline here, and I'm just going to just double click on the keyframe there. So right here, and we're just going to rotate the car back like this, and you can maybe even change the position. His butt's going through the car. And then uh, as, as he, uh, let's maybe make it a bit further down here. Okay. And then we want him to, the car to go back to the regular position. So I'm just going to copy that keyframe and paste it down over here. And again, I'm going to use that uh, same transition curve preset. The, uh, this one's going to elastic start with a sudden end. So it'll just kind of be like this. Uh, which one did I use again? And in a bounce, there you go. So when, it, when the car returns back to its normal state, it's kind of bouncing like that, okay? So hits it, boof, like that, and then, mm, okay, just bouncing back. Just ignore his butt going through the uh, thing, but there you go. Okay, just wanted to show you that really quick and easy. Uh, why did I mention that? I kind of get off topic sometimes, sorry guys. Uh, okay, so uh, Sandy asks a very good question. Can the emitter settings be animated over time? Yes, they can. And a very important uh, uh, thing to know is that when you're dealing with the popcorn effects, uh, let's take a look at this flame, for example. Any parameter that's, that's in green text, you can animate that. So quota, you can animate it. Emit rate, you can animate it. Uh, volume, everything like this, you can animate it. Uh, so anything that has green text, you can change that through the duration of your, of your uh, project and keyframe all the animations. So if you go to like attributes, for example, you'll see there's tons of attributes that you can bring up. Um, where are they here? Oh, emitter settings. There's tons of emitter setting stuff, like all these values right here. You can animate the particle mode. All these ones right here, you can animate uh, particle settings. All these ones right here, and you can go into like even more detail. So there's literally like, I don't know if there's hundreds, but there's definitely dozens of, of uh, parameters or attributes, you want to call them, that you can animate um, in the, uh, popcorn effects uh, tool. All right, all those attributes you can animate. Uh, good question, Sandy. Uh, so Donald asks, the learning samples was only available for pre-orders. Will, will it be available for purchase? Gosh, you know, as far as I know, the learning samples are included with the plugin. So as long as you purchase the plugin, you will get the learning samples for free. Okay, um, because the learning samples if you don't have the Popcorn Effects plugin, I wanted to mention this as well. If you don't have the Popcorn Effects plugin, you won't be able to modify any of these uh, settings here. So you'll, you'll you'll be stuck with the with the Popcorn Effects, um, but you won't be able to customize it that much. You know, which is fine for some people. I find that most of the Popcorn Effects are pretty cool the way they are. Uh, I find that sometimes when I experiment with them, I just mess them up even more. But of course, if you want full control over the attributes. And animating them, you need to have the popcorn effects plug in there. Uh, Robert asks, uh, okay, Wayne first asks, uh, when will the popcorn effects tutorials be coming out? I'm going to be uh, uh, launching or uh, releasing a bunch of new popcorn effects tutorials throughout the next month or so. I think we still have about, gosh, at least eight or eight or ten popcorn effects tutorials to come out. We already have, I think, I've produced maybe four. Um, but, uh, we're, yeah, we're just tons more to come. So, uh, we're going to be launching some later this week as well, I think on Friday. Um, so, uh, keep your eye open for those ones. Uh, Robert asks a good question. Is there motion blur for the character? Unfortunately not. We don't have motion blur, uh, yet. I think we're going to be considering that in the near future, uh, for a future version of, I think it's in maybe seven. Is it in seven? A later version of Icon seven or maybe eight. I'm not sure, but, uh, motion blur is definitely on, on the table. I love motion blur. Like I use Unreal all the time myself. Unreal Engine, uh, game engine for those of you who are not familiar with it, um, and use, uses motion blur. I love that stuff. I love the motion blur, and, uh, and Maya as well uses it. So, uh, okay, Martez asks, is there a way to replace props that have been animated 
and maintain the animation. Uh, you can replace characters and they, they will retain the animation that you've already created on a different character. So like, for example, our, our bald looking Bruce Willis hero here, I can replace him with a, with a woman in a dress if I want. <laughs> it'll look a little bit strange, but uh, it'll maintain all the animation. Uh, with props, however, you know, each prop has a different bone structure and different uh, mesh, obviously. So you cannot just, you know, replace, unless they have the same bone structure uh, or they're the same prop, just different colors, then, you know, if they have cosmetic changes, then you can obviously replace uh, the, the animation really easily. But uh, uh, in most cases, no, uh, Martez, for props, there's, there's too many differences between the props. Uh, so Don asks, what about rendering the scene with ambient occlusion? Uh, yeah, ambient occlusion is great. Um, I'm not really going for visuals in this particular webinar, but uh, obviously we could definitely spice up the visuals in this in this scene really nicely. Uh, I'd like to have it at nighttime. You know, you have to have the fire lighting up the scene with global illumination and maybe some some street lamps just shining some film noir type lights down on, on the street. Um, but uh, yeah, ambient occlusion, in case you're interested, visual. Uh, this atmosphere tab, ambient occlusion right there. You can notice a slight change on, on the front of the car there. We get a bit more depth. Okay, and uh, strength, strengthen it up. There you go, okay. Uh, don't wanna get too much into ambient occlusion since it's not really the topic here, but uh, yeah, obviously ambient occlusion adds a little bit of an extra nice, nice little extra touch to your scene. Uh, Jeffrey asks, when will the content uploader be able to accept popcorn effects files for upload to a store? Very good question, Jeffrey. That is actually my field. Uh, I, I do manage the marketplace and I believe that we, that is something that we could probably look at in the near future, but, uh, we don't have anyone really offering to, uh, to create popcorn effects, uh, their own custom popcorn effects yet. Uh, maybe email me a little bit later on and we, we can discuss that. I can discuss it with my team here. Um, but yeah, uh, good question. I'd, I'd like to have that in the future, obviously. I like to have m many more things in the marketplace, but uh, yeah, there's technical issues with a lot of it. So, and uh, legal issues with things such as music as well. All right, so Jeffrey asks, oh, I thought that was Jeffrey's question. Okay, Wayne asks, is popcorn effects based on transparent PNGs? Yeah, it is, Wayne, um, popcorn effects. You can actually take a look at, uh, for example, the uh, you can load up the the Sprite Atlas is what it's called, not Sprite Sheet, in Photoshop if you want. So I, I mentioned this item here in this resource list. Load it up, launch it using this button here. Load it up in Photoshop, and uh, you should have the Sprite Sheet showing. Oh gosh, what is this? Hopefully it doesn't uh, die on me here. Oh, I don't know. Let's just cancel this for now. <laughs> I just recently installed Photoshop on this computer here. You gonna load or what? Okay, there we go. Okay, so again, four by eight equals 32. So there's 32 sprite positions. Okay, and this is a transparent PNG. Uh, right now it's not because we're just, you know, when you export uh, when you launch it from, from Icon into Photoshop, it's going to just export it as a single image. But what you need to do is you need to import a transparent PNG. Uh, the, one of the tutorials that I recently did, oh gosh, what's it called? We do have the, um, uh, the template for that. Uh, where did I put it here? Yes, this one right here. So there's a, a popcorn effects sprite PSD template. I think this comes with the, the plugin as well. If you go to texture, um, you'll find the uh, the PSD files here, uh, like shape, for example. Okay, so here it is. Again, four, and then there's eight across. So you just place, you know, your sprites right here. So this is the transparent PNG that I'm talking about. And you would, of course, just import this into your diffuse channel right here. Uh, okay, uh, just double click it or click and drag it or whatever you want into that uh, diffuse channel. Okay, where is my questions panel? There we go. Okay, so uh, <laughs> okay, so Don put the popcorn effects uh, website in the uh, questions panel. I'll just go ahead and actually just uh, oh, I guess I can't seem to copy the question from 
Okay, it's popcorneffects.com, by the way. All right, if you're interested, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> popcorneffects.com is the website for popcorn effects. There you go. And there's your, you can find all the stuff, download or buy the popcorn effects stuff right there. All right, and uh, you can find other products, uh, all kinds of different stuff. All right, so they have a Unity plugin and a Reel as well. Unreal UE4 and Unity plugin, all right. And they also have an iClone plugin, hooray. All right, so uh, that's the website for popcorn effects. Um, okay, I'm not sure what these other ones are. Oh yeah, there's uh, popcorn effects tutorials here. Oh, I can actually can copy this text. Never mind. So here's the tutorials for popcorn effects. Okay, uh, I'll put this um, in the chat window actually for you guys. So if you want to check out this URL yourself, I'll just throw this in the chat window here for the current tutorials. Um, I, I always just go to the YouTube playlist myself, but uh, here they are, done by yours truly. And uh, this one here is uh, the learning samples. Uh, so it's a pre-order bonus. Uh, I, think, I think you get it with the plugin. Um, don't quote me on that. But uh, you should be able to get the learning samples with the plugin, I believe. I'm not sure if it's a, it uh, should be a, still a bonus, but uh, anyways, don't quote me on that, guys. Email me if, if, if one of you purchases the Popcorn FX plugin and don't get the learning samples, just email me. And we'll, uh, we'll figure it out. Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Back to the questions. Uh, okay, so, um, FX library, okay. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Bernard mentions it'd be great to see a character throwing a magical fireball as part of a popcorn effects demonstration. Well, Bernard, I think we could probably fit that in in a future tutorial, how a character throwing a fireball. It's pretty simple stuff to, to do. So, uh, yeah, all right. Uh, thanks for that. Um, Jeffrey likes the rocking of the car. It's really simple and easy to do. Uh, you know, 10 seconds if you know what you're doing. Um, uh, Don here mentions a book on creating cinema, cinematic scenes, cinematography. Uh, I'll place this in the chat window as well uh, for Don who wanted to, to share this, all right? If you, any of you guys are interested in cinematography, this is a, a good book. I have a, a really good book I like is by McKendrick. It's called On Filmmaking. And I read that because it was recommended by the, uh, the creators of Black Mirror. I'm not sure if any of you guys have seen the TV show Black Mirror, but... Uh, it's one of his main influences uh, for books. It's called uh, called uh, on filmmaking. Making McKendrick. I'll put it in here as well. Rick, I think that's how you spell McKendrick. A uh, good one to check out though as well. Just order off Amazon or whatever. Goes into a lot of the old school uh, stuff. Uh, MIB Men in Black. The Man in Black asks, can the pop popcorn particles be used in Unity? Uh, yeah, well, they have the plugin, which I just showed you there. Um, you have to uh, purchase that separately, though. Um, okay, and uh, here's a URL from Don about cinematography, if any of you are interested. I know a lot of you guys are, so I'm just putting these all in the chat window in case you want to check these URLs out on your own time. Uh, thanks for those, uh, Don. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, you can change the, the same character on the screen. Um uh, There's another question from Don. Okay, so Jeffrey mentions he didn't get the learning uh, stuff, learning samples with the uh, popcorn effects plugin. So I'll, I'll ask the, uh, the product guys about that and uh, I'll get back to you. Make sure you email me and, uh, and let me know if you didn't get it and I'll email them and see what we can do. Um, I'm not sure if they're available or separate purchase or not. So hopefully I'm not putting my foot in my mouth here, guys. But uh, uh, okay. All right, so another comment from that as well. Uh, from uh, Philip, I believe, yeah. Uh, so one final question here from uh, Malcolm. I tried applying the rain popcorn. How do I get it to cover the whole scene and the rain to flood the floor? Uh, okay, so Malcolm is using the, the rain plugin I've used that once, but I think basically what you would want to do is use the volume um, emitter setting that I mentioned before. Let's just test it out real quick here. Um, let's just, uh, where are we? 
the rain one, is it in the nature? Yeah, but it's in nature. There we go, rain. So let's, let's make a rain on this scene. <laughs> okay. Let's actually bring the rain somewhere else so it's kind of far away from the other stuff. Come on, get over here. All right, so if we simulate this, Shift S to simulate. Where is my rain? Oh, probably because I have auxiliary lighting on. And let's try and end that simulation there. See, I've gone and, I've gone and screwed up my whole scene. <laughs> I'm not sure why it's raining, not raining. But uh, to make the rain larger, you probably you just change the zone. I'm not sure why it's not showing on my screen right now, but oh, there we go. Now it's finally showing. Okay, just probably change your zone to a higher value and you can change your scale. A little bit showed. I'm not sure why it's not uh, some pretty, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I did see some rain momentarily there. Maybe the wind force is too much. Nope. Weird. There's probably some setting that I'm missing, which is why the rain's not showing up, because it is simulating. If we play back, maybe. The rain is a dud, all right? There's probably some setting that I'm missing, or it's a little a bug we've kind of encountered, but I would imagine it's the zone X and zone Y, because uh, we have, like I mentioned in the other uh, plugin uh, effects, we have that uh, emitter setting. You can change the volume. Uh, probably be similar to this zone X and Y, I imagine. Sorry, I don't have a more definitive answer for uh, for that on you, uh, for that for you, uh, Malcolm, I believe. Yeah, Malcolm. Okay, so Mickey mentions for the missing samples, go back and recheck the purchases. Um, <laughs> Don said it's dry season, no rain. Uh, okay, so. Um, yeah, Mickey says go back and check your purchases. Um, so you can, you, you can actually like log into your account, by the way. My questions panel is going all crazy. Um, if you like, want to uh, log into your account, just go up here to like, uh, like my account. I probably shouldn't show you guys all my uh, stuff here, but uh, <laughs> um, sign in. And uh, under registration, you'll see that uh, you have the download and you have like the patch bonus stuff. So uh, uh, maybe it's not for that one. I may need to go to orders. Uh, so there are popcorn effects tools right here. There's the install, install RLD. So maybe uh, here's the, okay, yeah. So the plugin for iClone plus the popcorn effects library, it's probably in here somewhere. And you probably want to, uh, I think here's the plugin, the library 40, you view detail. Okay, there's the learning samples. Um, there you go. So learning samples, you can find it down there. That's uh, you go go into your account and go to order, and then just uh, you know find it down here. Hopefully that works for you guys. Um, if not, um, let me know because I'm I'm pretty sure it came with the plugin. That's what they told me anyways. All right, so we're a bit over time here, so I'm gonna just uh, clear up the last. Uh, okay, so Jeffrey says it's there. Okay, so hopefully other people found it as well. Um, okay, so Donald mentions uh, he was able to get the ring working. So <laughs> good, that, good, good on you there, Donald. Uh, you did you did one better than me, uh, but uh, I haven't really experimented with it yet myself. So uh, um, yes, oh maybe the rain was falling above ground level. Doesn't make sense though. It should be falling. Where are you, Rain? Where are you when I need you? <laughs> okay, I'm not sure why. I probably, maybe I messed, the, the zone's too big maybe. It's just kind of scattered. Gosh, I don't know. There'll be something here that I'm missing. Anyways, I don't want to spend too much time, waste too much of your time trying to just troubleshoot the rain. Um, okay, so uh, we'll just do one final question here from Mickey. Can you resize the transporter effect? Uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Um, 
Maybe it's under VFX. Not sure which one you mean there, Mickey. Uh, maybe it's in. Uh, just let me know if you if you're in, when you're talking about transporter. Oh, teleporter right here. Okay. Uh, geez, I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> I don't want to spend too much time just troubleshooting this stuff, guys. But uh, um, if you can resize it, there should be a global size or something like that. I haven't really experimented with this on my own time, so your guess is really as good as mine at this point. I've only been using it for. Uh, a couple months and there's just so much of it to there's so many like every every effect has different parameters and different attributes to modify so i can't really tell you uh, you know what's what there but uh yeah i, I think we'll just end it off there because i don't want to just be sitting here like just troubleshooting <laughs> the uh popcorn effects stuff uh you can kind of just do that on your own time hopefully uh, hopefully you guys forgive me for that but uh yeah i think we all have uh stuff to do i need to have dinner myself but uh <laughs> all right anyways um, again, any any other questions, email me, kai at reillusion.com. Uh, make sure you fill out that survey. Uh, we're always looking for your feedback and any any suggestions for future webinars as well. We're uh, you know more than willing to entertain any suggestions you have for that as well. Uh, any, any suggestions for tutorials or anything, uh, make sure you just contact me or, you know, whatever. Um, that that uh, discount for the Popcorn FX Library 40, we'll be sending that out as well to you guys. I really recommend taking advantage of it. It's a really good, uh, really good uh, piece of uh, software there. A little really good content pack, rather. Um, and yeah, recording. We are recording, and we'll be sending this to you in uh, in two shakes of a lamb's tail, which will probably be in the next 24 hours. Once we get this recording uh, all converted and uploaded, we'll be sending that to you. All right, so uh, yeah, I think we'll just end it off there. We're about uh, 27, 28 minutes over time. Uh, so apologies for that, guys. But uh, sometimes, you know, you just uh, get on a roll and you just want to learn mo learn about more stuff, especially new stuff like uh, popcorn effects. I know everyone's excited about that, uh, as, I, as am I myself. So yeah, thanks so much for attending, guys. Hopefully you learned a lot. And, uh, you know, take your time to review the video if, you, if I went too fast for some parts. And... Uh, yeah, I think I'll sign off there. So uh, again, thanks for attending, everyone, and make sure you make sure you check out our YouTube channel and our forums over at forum.reillusion.com. We have a very active community that can help you out with any other questions you might have. All right, so I'll sign off and bid you adieu, and we'll see you in the next uh, webinar. <laughs>